This is something I promised to do quite a while ago and I just never got around to it. This is a, a good opportunity because I've got a few chassis. I've got a couple of these GP9 um, Atherton chassis that I bought at the train show a couple months back. Um, which is the exact same chassis that's underneath this guy. Um, I think I uh, did a little bit of work on this one on camera way, way back in the early days of my channel, if you want to take a look. But what I'm going to do, just for simplicity, is use this bare chassis here to install a decoder and show you how it's done on these Atherton chassis, which are incredibly standard. I think I got a pair of these for 10 bucks or so at the show. Um, you can get them all over the place. Um, normally they don't come bare. I just happen to buy a pair, a couple bare because I want to do the projects on them. But since I don't have to worry about the, the, uh, body of it, I figured this would be a good way to show it. This is an, an even older, uh, Atherin chassis. This is from an RS3 and this is how they tend to come with this little metal springy strap here joining the uh this pickup straps to the top side of the motor um, this one was modified by the guy i bought it off he replaced that strap with these wires soldered onto the pickup uh onto the two pickups and soldered onto a piece of strap on top of the motor uh, this is much more reliable because you're not relying on that little contact right there. So that is the first modification I would suggest that you do if you're, if you're running these Atherin chassis. Um, that alone will improve your reliability considerably. I'm not going to worry about that one today. So I'm going to operate on this one. It has, as most of them, most of the chassis do, it has the light mounted on a bracket, which is itself riveted or staked onto the frame. And that allows it to pick up the other side of the power and take it to the light. Now for the motor, the other side of the power, you know, you know power off both rails, right? These two pickups are taking it off the rail on that side. The rail on this side is getting its pickup through the chassis. Uh, let me zoom in here. See that metal plate behind the wheels? That's taking the power pickup. And it's bent over and is actually part of the, um, the kingpin or the boss that the, locomotive, the chassis sits on top of the, uh, on top of the truck. And that's how the other rail this rail gets its power into the frame and then underneath the motor there's an insulating a rubber block or plastic block that is just poked through there with with uh, kind of pins and it grabs onto the bottom of the motor there but underneath the motor there's a similar clip to this thing only it's got a couple of barbs that stick out and go through the paint here it's scraped off underneath there and into the frame. So that's the other brush of the motor. Um, so to put a DCC decoder in, you need to break all these connections, um, these ones here, and the connection between the bottom side of the motor and the frame. Then you need to make minimum of four connections to the decoder. And here is the decoder that we're going to use. So coming out this side, we've got six wires and this side's two wires that are for an advanced function that I'm not going to mess with right now. I need to do more experimentation with it. Let's pretend those two don't exist. So we have six wires over here. Uh, two of them go to the track, which is the red and black wires. Two of them, uh, gray and orange go to the motor and normally there are eight wires this is this one is using a little bit older style um, it's only got six wires 
Um, these two wires are the lights. Uh, uh, let's see, now yellow is the back light and white is the front light. Normally there's a blue wire coming out of this end, which would be the common for the lights. But since I'm using the cheapest DCC decoder that I can find, which I got off Banggood, um, this company called Lays DCC, you can look up the manual on their website and it is not in English. It is in fact, well, it's partially in English and partially in, I don't know, I've found words in Dutch and Portuguese and I don't know exactly what it is. It's a horrendous translation anyway, but long story short, it shows using the black wire, which is one of the pickups as the common for the two lights. And in the DCC standards, um, actually in the, in this Digitrax book that I've got from way back when, it shows a six wire configuration for a much older model of decoder. And it shows using the red wire as a forward and reverse light common, um, which I suppose it doesn't matter because the first thing that happens inside the decoder is, is a bridge rectifier. So either of those would be a reasonable and equal reference. Uh, one warning that's in every single decoder install manual is do not let the two motor wires, either the two motor wires come in contact with either of the two rail wires. Uh, because you'll let the smoke out. That's the short answer. So to avoid that, well, we just will avoid that. Um, and to avoid that, that's why we're going to have to pull this motor out and disconnect that little strap on the bottom that I was talking about. So to get into it, grab ye old soldering iron and desolder that off there. Um, this now, this uh, lighting bracket is just kind of force fit into the tabs there. You can see this little dimple in that upper hole. So it's just a matter of grabbing it and pulling it out really. Um, just work it up. There. Okay, I'll take that wire off of there. I'll save these bits of wire. They might be a useful length later. Um, the other thing, I'm not going to bother with... Well, I might keep this light bracket for now. Um, but for this one, I'm not going to use incandescent lights on it when it's done. I'm going to use some LEDs. And again, we'll worry about that in a little while. So that's that. Um, now to pull the motor out. And the cleanest way to do that first is to just get all this, this linkage out of the way. So the caps on the gear towers are just sort of clipped on. You can see these little angly rampy bits here. I find just getting under there with a screwdriver, and pop that off. So when you pop the top off the gear tower there, you can see the worm gear and a couple of bushings. They just lift out if they didn't already launch out. And then the shaft just slides out. See, it's a spline shaft and it just engages with that, with that universal joint on the end of the flywheel. I'm just going to put that... Oh, actually, while we're in here, so remember I was talking about the other power pickup? There it is there. This one's kind of corroded, so I'm going to give it a bit of a, a bit of a polish and a clean before I put this back together. I'll just repeat at the other end here. There, that's popped loose. Cover off.
crop that out. Same thing. So now we have just the motor and the chassis. And grab the motor and just kind of wiggle it a little bit and poke these up through. Grip the motor. Okay. So that didn't even fully come out. This one's not nearly as flexible as it should be either. But down in the middle, see here, is that area where the paint is scraped off so it can make contact. And there's those two little barbs that I was talking about before. So we need to make two connections, two wire connections down here in the belly. Which we know we don't because, oh, we could connect to there but we don't want to because we've got this convenient connection over here. We do need to connect though a wire onto this because that's the, that's the second connection to the motor. And at the same time, we need to isolate it from the frame so we don't let the smoke out of our decoder. So one easy way to do this is just to bend these guys up and inside. That's not really positive enough. There's still room in there. So what I'm going to do is just get under the end of this thing, this little tab here, and lift it up carefully though, because being a standard brushed DC motor, there is a brush there, and behind the brush is a spring. So we just carefully and gently lift that off so that the spring doesn't go spraying. There it is there. Now we've got this guy and we can do a little bit of operating on it to get those tabs completely down and out of the way. So there we go. That's nice and flush. And just to be extra super duper certain here, I'm going to cut a piece of electrical tape with my exacto knife, if I can find it, just to fit, just to fit the width there. Again, this is just a cut to fit. It doesn't need to be super precise or beautiful. It's never going to be seen. It's on the bottom of the locomotive. And I'll just stick that on there. And that should hopefully mean that I'm never going to get accidental contact down the bottom there. But the other thing we need to do is put a wire onto this guy here. According to the book here, the red wire goes to the engineer's site or the right side. That's forward. This is the right rail. The right rail is the one that used to go to the top of the motor. The left rail is the one that used to go to the bottom of the motor. The, sorry, the gray wire would be the one that I'm going to attach here to the bottom of the wire, the bottom. The other thing I need to do is figure out where I'm going to mount this so I'll know how long the wires are going to be. And I think, oh, I don't want to flip that over because I don't want to lose the brush. I'll just pretend it's the right way up. I think I'm going to just tape it right to the top of the motor, which means that the gray wire is going to run down to the bottom of the motor. So I need it to be about that long. But since I'm a bit paranoid, I'm going to give it a little bit more. I can always shorten it, but wires are no fun to lengthen. Okay. So now it's just desoldering. As usual, give the tip a bit of a cleaning. Tin the tip with a bit of solder. Get in on the end here where it's not going to interfere with anything and tin that very nicely. 
in this wire all tinning is is just basically melting a little coating of of solder onto the wire and onto the surface so now that there's solder on both sides of what I'm connecting all I have to do is refill it melt it together hold that still for a while while it cools and there we go now then put our our little tiny spring and spring in back in there where's the tweezers to manage that guy Get in there. Okay. Cup that in under and and snap that guy down. There we go. That keeps out of the way. So I'll just put that on. one side tuck that down into the slots on the other one use my screwdriver to bend that in there a little bit and we'll wind up with the holes and then just push okay there it is. Huh. That's the hardest part of the whole thing. Right there. So now then, that's that wire. My other rail wire is, no, that's not the rail wire. My other motor wire is the orange one. That guy. And since I'm going to set this decoder right there, that wire only needs to be that one. You Notice know, so I'm leaving myself a bit of slack to move it out of the way in case I need to. And again, give it a gentle little strip. Clean the tip, tin the tip. In the wire. This is already tinned from before. I'm going to put a little bit of fresh solder on there just for good measure. Melt those two guys together. There it is. Two wires down. And then we can kind of see a little better how that's going to mount. I'm just going to mount that with a piece of tape. It's got heat shrink around it, so it's not going to short out against anything. And now we need the black and red wires. Which are a little bit caught up in here. I'm just going to do a little bit of wire management. Keep things out of the way. There's the black wire. And there's the red wire. Um, so remember that the red wire is going to be on the right side. There's front, there's right. And the right is these guys here. The black goes to the other rail, which is this guy here. And now then, I could reuse this light mounting bracket. Actually, I probably will. So let me just get this old light bulb out of here. Which looks like it's... Let me just zoom in a little bit for you. So it looks like it's just, yeah, this clips off like that. 
light bulb comes out. That should be a uh, 12 to 14 volt DC bulb, but I'm not going to use that. And I'm not going to use that, but I will slide this back into its position later. And I think I'll use it to hold the LED, um, at least temporarily. I don't know exactly what chassis I'm going to be putting this on. So I don't know exactly what I need for the LED. I'm going to solder onto this piece down here, which means the wire needs to be a bit longer than I'd originally anticipated, but that's fine. I'll just route it along there and down to there. And there's my length. If you've watched any of my modeling uh, projects so far, you know that I don't do a lot of ruler measurements unless I have to. I like to cut to fit. That way, you know, it fits. Let's tin that up. And repeat the process down here that I did before. Shine it up a little bit with the file just to get down to some bare metal. Clean that, tin that, apply heat. There we go. A shiny soldered surface. And can I do this and let you see it all at the same time? I need to bend that in a little bit. Uh, that looks strong. Okay. So now that, that can go back there and go back like that to the decoder and I'll just tape it onto there when I get the chance. Okay. Now then, I think I can drop the trucks back in, which is exactly the reverse of how they came out. Um, I'll zoom out a bit for this. Oops, pull the gear off. Well, there's the pin that this sits down on. And I think I'm going to want a different file here. I'm just going to... Clean that up a little bit so that it makes better contact under there. And I can see that there's a little bit of lubricant on there, which is okay with. Um, what? Drop that guy in like that. Bring the, the shaft back here. Rotate it until that spline fits properly into the shaft. Like that. So that shaft is just an extendable thing so that you can negotiate corners and stuff easily and up and down over hills and valleys. And there's a universal joint in there. So there's that guy. No. Just drop that clip down over the top and that's what that keeps the dust out of the gears and it also holds it from falling out now this one let's pull this bracket out of the way this bracket and repeat there down in there and it works and snap that on there we go and just clean the lube off my hands okay so now then the red wire has to connect to here and I also want to join it to this one back here so I've got extra extra good contact so 
I need to dive into my one of my boxes of wires and see what I can find in here. Can that and stick it on. Yep. Structurally sound. I'll get myself enough wire to go up and over here without getting into the gubbins. And there. Drop that a hair along. Now then that one and this one both have to go on to there. Right? Right. You could use a proper wire stripper. I just find it more convenient after all these years of doing this to use the cutters. So the reason I have to wait here, I have to wait for that melted blob of solder to cool down and solidify, because if I just let go right away, um, things are going to move around. And if that little puddle of solder moves while it's in the process of solidifying, then you get what's called a cold solder joint, which is mechanically not very good and electrically not very good. That's why I did that. Okay, next thing, I th think what I'll do, is just clip that guy back in there and lift him up a little bit so that he can't contact that, because that would be bad. That would be a dead short across the two rails. And I'll just give this a little crimp to hold it in place. Okay might even take a bit of my tape here. Why did I cut it to the diagonal? Because I did. Matters not. I'm just going to wrap that around there just for insurance. Even though I'm pretty confident it's not going to splash against each other. You just don't want to take the chance. Okay, so I'm using LEDs. Here is a bag of three millimeter warm white LEDs from the usual cheapest available Chinese source. Three millimeter because they're they're small. They're actually very similar to the size of the light bulb that came out of there. Check that. Um, and I don't want to run these very hot. I want to run these like that two milliamps. Uh, in the manuals, they suggest about a 640. I'm going to use a 1K, a uh, thousand ohm resistor to drop the current down because I don't want them screaming bright. I'm not trying to light up the room. We need enough uh, a wire to come from the common, which I get, like I said, I'm taking from one of the track pickups, which is an old way of doing it. I'm going to take it from there to the LEDs and they're going to be mounted like that and that. Um, they'll mount off the body somehow. Um, that's to be determined based on the body, but the fact remains that I need enough wire to get there. But enough messing around with these little bits of wire. I'm going to use a proper length here. And actually, I'm going to take two links off. One can actually come from the front. And the other one... No, they can both come from the front. But one can be a short piece and one can be a long piece. So I'm just going to twist these two stripped ends together. 
And since my fingers are big and imprecise, I'll just use something not quite as ugly. My old pliers. Okay, so there I've got the wire to the decoder from the track, the wire to the front light, and a nice long wire to the back light. Uh, opposite. Front's over here. See, it says F. Um, so the front light is the white wire. So these two will go that away. And yeah, that's where that one ends. So we'll just clip that black wire off there. Throw him down into the pile. And this yellow wire and this black wire will be coming up to the hood somewhere. I want to leave myself a little bit of slack in there, but not too much because I obviously don't want the wires getting tangled up in the flywheel. I think that's about right. Okay. Now then, got my two LEDs and I need some resistors. Specifically, some 1K resistors. There's my tweezers because my big fingers again. I think... I'm going to use some of these cheap little blue 8th watt Chinese resistors. And And to keep it all pretty, I'll dive into my heat shrink assortment here and find something appropriate. Hey, maybe this really tiny heat shrink that I got by accident will work. Probably not. I'm thinking I'm going to need this 2 millimeter stuff. On the LEDs, the long lead is the positive side, which should be the one coming from there. So just for no apparent reason... It doesn't matter which side the resistor goes on. It's a series circuit. I'm going to clip the negative lead short. And clamp that in my thing. Going to clip my resistor down to about the same length. Clean up my soldering tip all nice here. Get a light tinning on there. Can I do this big Clive style? Oh, look at that. Get a light tinning on the resistor. Now I need a little bit more solder on there. That'll do nicely. Then solder those guys together. And clip that off back about there. And tip clean and shiny. Not clean and shiny. Okay. Now then, the fun part. 
Uh, so for that one, I'm going to need heat shrink about that long. I'll just do that twice. And let's do this as the front one because the wires are longer. Slide the shrink over first. So it's there we need it. Give that guy a little strip off. Give that guy a little bit more strip off. Quickly tin them. And what did I decide? That's that. Yes, shaky hands. Okay. Slide the heat shrink in there. The heat shrink's going to do two things. Electrically insulate, obviously, because that's what it always does. But it's also going to provide a little bit of mechanical stability. Hey, and then just repeat with the other one. Okay, here we are. Front and back lights. Like I said, the reason that I left these long is because I don't know exactly how I'm going to mount them in the body of whatever this ends up in. So I can bundle the wires up tighter if I have to. Um, and that's kind of what I'm going to do with these extra blue and black wires that I'm not using. I don't want to... Well, I'm going to cut them off a little bit here. But then I've got to bundle them up. It's just all mechanical now, really. Um, bundle those up. Make sure those are all up and out of the way. And then attach it down. Historically, I've been using electrician's tape and it works just fine. But now that I've got capped on tape, I'm going to use it. Um, what benefit does it bring to this application? It's a little bit thinner. It's quite strong. It's not stretchy. It's heat resistant. Although if I'm getting heat in here, I'm doing something horrendously wrong. It's electrically insulating. Then again, so is the electrician's tape. But the main reason I'm using it is because I have it. So there we go. That is the decoder installed. Um, with the hood on, you're never going to see all the wires. Let's make sure that everything moves, and it does. I'm going to put that on the rails and see how she works. I haven't broken the motion yet. Light. Light. There we go. So full disclosure, what I had done wrong is I had got the polarity on the two LEDs incorrect. And... I had guessed wrong with the white and, well, with coordinating the white and yellow wires for forward and reverse light with the motor polarity of the gray and orange wire. But the easiest thing to change was the wiring for the lights, which I did. And now it's beautiful. It's happy. I like it. And 
it's a smooth runner without me having to do anything more to the chassis which means two things actually one the guy I bought it from did a pretty good job of tuning it up before I bought it off him and the second thing which is even more impressive is that I managed to not screw it up uh, even by taking it apart and putting it back together it still works that's excellent All right thanks for watching if you got anything to say about what I did leave her in the comments below I'll talk to you again